If you go the extra mile and make blind frets on your guitars, then you already know just how time consuming and how eye destroying that process can be. I want to solve that problem, so we're going to do just that. Hi and welcome back. Normally when I do an episode, I try to present it to you in as cohesive a format as possible. This time though, I didn't really have any idea of how I was going to achieve my objective. So in this episode, I'm just going to take you along for the ride and together we're going to develop a fret tang removing system that actually works. The brief, it needs to be intensely cheap, easy to make, and it needs to work and keep on working. I played with the cat while I was thinking about it and I did some exercise which is normally very conducive to having epiphanies. I'd seen so many expensive designs and I thought, how can I possibly make this thing cheap? I have a condition called aphantasia which means I'm unable to visualize mental images. So the inside of my head is completely dark. So I do all of my visualization in Rhino. So this is what I came up with. It's a simple block with a tang slot in it to accept the fret and a recess for the radius fret to bend down into. The next piece is just a simple rectangle with a hole in it for the grinding burr to come up and contact the fret through. It also has two rails on it for our fret holding jig to slide between. It also needs a stop block to stop the sliding jig from going too far into the cutter. Then we duplicate our rectangle with the hole in it and to it we add two hinges and two lockable tabs on the sides which will lock in our desired angle. We'll get to that in a minute. As I previously mentioned our cutter which is in red comes up through both of these rectangular pieces. So what we want to do is screw in a laminate trimmer onto the bottom rectangle. If you only have a big plunge router, that's okay. There's room for that too. But ideally, it would be much better with just a regular laminate trimmer. Now, to hold it all down, we can just use a simple offcut of wood, a block screwed and glued into the underside of our bottom rectangle. And this can go into your vise. To safely change our frets over, I designed this reloader, which is in red. I'll explain more about that in a little while. Because we're trying to cut radius frets, we're going to have to account for the radius angle of the fret by offsetting our cutter. In this case, for a 16 inch radius, we need a 0.86 degree offset. If I want to remove two millimeters of tang, then I'll also have to account for that. So if my bottom rectangle is 20.25 millimeters thick and we get a 0.86 degree angle, then it's going to be 23.12 millimeters from the top rectangle. Later on in this process, we're going to discover that none of this math matters and that we can just dial it in by eye. So don't panic. Here's a very rough approximation of how our adjustment setup works. I mentioned my reloading jig before and here it is. It's so simple. It's just two rails to accept the fret holding jig and two stop blocks. The stop block that's furthest away is the one that stops the jig which slides and the stop block closest to us stops the fret. I'll demonstrate this in more detail later. Let's jump out to the workshop. I created a toolpath for my CNC to cut this out and I'll share that for free down in the description. For non-CNC people, I'll also include a free PDF plan. So after that's cut, I can remove it from the CNC. I'm wearing my pajama pants. You gotta pat the workpiece to make sure it doesn't explode. 
and then break all the tabs from the CNC so we can free our little work pieces. So as you can see, none of these bits are at all difficult to make. I'm using my fret cutting saw here to cut the fret slot. If you don't have one, you could just use a razor blade or a hacksaw. Unlike with actual fret slots, the kerf isn't that important. It doesn't need to grip the fret, it just needs to make room for the tang to slip down into. The underside of the fret that contacts your jig should be as close to flat as possible. Let's work on the base. Our cutter aligns with this hole, so what we want to do is align our fret with the middle of it. I should say right now that accuracy isn't important at all with this jig. You can pretty much just slap it together and it will work great. But what I'm doing is just trying to work out where I want to situate my rails. This next marking is the center line for the fret to travel along. So just adjusting the jig and this about right there is the look that I'm going for. Now I've popped my rails on there and I'm just marking where I want them to end and extending that little mark right across to both of them. Once that first rail is secure, I drop a feeler gauge in between the jig and the rail and that allows me to glue in the second rail with a little bit of wiggle room for the jig to move within. Okay, let's put that aside for now and work on the very bottom part of this jig. So we've just got a simple strip of ply here and what I want to do is glue it to the bottom so that our vise will have something to bite into. I also add a couple of screws so the router doesn't pull this thing apart and an extra block just to give the vise something extra to bite into. I'm going to use this jig all the time, so I'm dedicating its own little laminate trimmer to it. Here I'm taking the mount and just eyeballing it, working out the placement for the screws. Now it's magically attached, flipped upside down and we've put our top rectangle on there. I'm very professional, I meant to do that. And I'm just really quickly marking out my side tab position. And now I've glued them on and you can see I've used a little bit of masking tape to protect the bottom part of the jig. Now that's all dry and I'm just using my Russian space pen to mark the position on the bottom part of the jig where I want my attachment screws to go. Okay, so to drill the holes and access the relevant area, I'm going to have to separate these two parts of the jig. I can see a little bit of glue has made its way somewhere it shouldn't have. That's okay, we got there in the end. And I'm actually surprised at how strong that little glue joint ended up being. I'm not gonna do anything fancy here, I'm just going to drill a couple of holes and mount with screws and washers. Now I want to bring the two parts of my jig together and I'm just quickly lining them up by feel. Then I just add screws and washers, one on each side, to lock the tab in place. 
To get this thing really cooking, we're going to need a hinge. Now, I only have this old piano hinge off cut and clearly it's too big. That's no problem. I just do some scribbles on it and off camera so as not to bore you too much, I turn it into this. You could probably buy this kind of thing for 15 cents on the internet, but I was being impatient. So I'm just lining it up here on the center line and marking out the screw positions. When mounting hinges like this, I always do a diagonal set first, mount them and then work out the rest of my screw positions from there. And then magically it's all screwed together. Our fret is lining up with the cutter perfectly, so what we have to do now is work out our angle. Ignoring all of the math that I worked out before, I just put it in the jig, I lined it up by eye, and here we go, I'm just going to give it a test. I'm being super cautious because this is my first time using this cutter, so I just want to see how hungry it is. And it's actually very hungry, so that'll definitely speed things up a lot. I'm really happy with that result. That's a really satisfying test run, especially as it was just lined up visually. Uh, in this video so far, I've worn two different pairs of pants. And in this section of the video, I'm wearing no pants. It's just that kind of channel, you guys. Like I often do when I'm wearing no pants, I've got my millimeter ruler out. And what I'm trying to work out is just how much of the fret I want to feed into the cutter. So I've drawn a little line there and that's going to guide me as per the placement of my stop block. Like I said before, we're just slapping this prototype together. So what I'm going to do is draw a rough line about halfway on one side and then another on the other side. Then I remove my stop block and I do a little cross, little cross hairs in between the two. And that's where I'm going to drill my hole. I want to use this threaded insert that I have there to capture the bolt that I'm going to install from underneath. And I can't hammer it in unless I take the jig apart. So what I'm going to do is pop it into the hole that I just made and then use a G clamp to squeeze it home. Now that that's installed, this part is finished. But in order to achieve maximum efficiency, we need to make the reloading jig. We already made the parts, so this is going to come together really quickly. So just like in the CAD drawing before, everything starts with our fret holding jig. We add a couple of rails in exactly the same way that we did them before. And if you thought that last jig was easy, this one's going to blow your mind because it doesn't have to interact with anything outside of itself, like the cutter on the router. So you can position your parts anywhere that you like on the board. Okay, the reloading jig is done, 
So let's give the whole system a test. Here is our setup. We have our adjustable fret tang remover. I'm loading a fresh fret into the fret holder. That holder is in the reloader. Let's cut some frets. Putting a fret into the holder, not clamping it down until it's been loaded. Now it's clamped and we can grind it. You can cut these tangs a lot faster than this, but if you take your time like I am, you'll get a much cleaner result. I'm just switching the fret around in the holder, putting it in the reloader, giving it a clamp and then feeding it back in to do the other side. I don't want to sound like an infomercial again, but it's so easy. Here's the view from the top. And here's the ground tang. It just looks perfect. We've passed 2000 subscribers, you guys. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much to the 500 people that followed me in the month of March. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those cliches, buy some merch, buy a guitar. See you next time.